Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert will be discussing some of the scrum interview questions that might be asked in your interviews. So let's get into the video. So now let me try to make you all understand like whatever the questions which were being asked as part of this particular batch. So let me go one by one with all those questions. Okay. So the first question which was being asked was, have you used any modified versions of Scrum before? Okay. So here, are there any modified versions of Scrum? Basically, what happened is there is something called as a Scrum guide, right? So this Scrum guide keeps on modifying. Okay. So this is something like which we should be closely observing, which keeps on modifying recently also. It was modified. Now, when it is modified means, please don't think that entire framework will be changed. The way of working will change. That is never going to happen because you know that your scrum, which is being present as a framework will try to achieve all your agile values and principles, right? So basically what you should understand is here and there, some terminologies may change, but otherwise most of the things will remain the same. You see that some updated versions will come in. So we will add some technical words. We will enhance certain concepts, but we are not going to change the entire direction. That is never going to happen. So if you want to have a look into the Scrum Guide, okay, so I can just go ahead and try to show you that how the Scrum Guide basically looks like. Okay, so let me go with the Scrum Guide. So I can just try to show you so that it can be easier. Okay, so let me download this. So this is the scrum guide. Okay. So it, which, which was written by Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland. So this is your scrum guide. Now this keeps on modifying. See, recently it was modified in the year 2020 in the month of November. So this keeps on changing when you want to see that whether the scrum gets modified or not. Yes, it gets modified and you can observe the same from the scrum guide and recent change was happened in the year November 2020. Okay, so here if you could observe, this is how the scrum guide is present. You can just go ahead and also have a look into it so that it will be helpful for you whenever if you want to go ahead and try to check it out. Okay, it is more of like a Bible, like which can be helpful for us whenever we need any help. So this will be the important guide which can help us out in whatever way it can be uh, beneficial for us. Okay, so this is what we basically called as our scrum guide. Okay, so for the first question, how have you like any, any modified versions of the scrum are present or not? So this is how you should be able to tackle it with the help of your scrum guide you could be able to know that how many modified versions are being done with respect to Scrum. Next question was, how did you adapt when a Scrum process was not working for a project? Remember one thing, there is no mandatory rule that you should use Scrum. Now, when, the, when there is no demand, when there is no requirement, why should I use Scrum? See, I'm not saying that under Agile, only Scrum is the framework. I am saying Scrum is a framework. Kanban is a framework. There are so many other frameworks. If you believe that your project is more of like development, okay, where you are focusing only on the development project, then try to use a scrum there. Let me say your team is more into operations work, like where they don't have any development activities to do. Then go ahead and try to use Kanban there. So it all depends like how the nature of the team is and how the nature of work is present with respect to team. Based on that, you need to choose what framework you have to use. It doesn't mean that I know Scrum, so I will only use Scrum. Then that, that is not going to give any fruitful result. Now, let me say if I change the question a little bit, I am trying to implement the Scrum, but I'm not able to do it. Why? Because there are some challenges, like maybe your team is not aware of what is Scrum, what is Agile. You should go ahead and coach them as a Scrum master. You should mentor them. You should guide them. And you should go ahead and try to make them understand the things in a much better way so that then they can implement the scrum to the maximum extent. 
like how I'm trying to make you all understand, right? In the same way, you should also make your team understand so that they will be able to go ahead and try to use the Scrum to the maximum extent. Okay, you should educate them, you should guide them, mentor them, coach them, and then give them the idea of what exactly the Scrum is and what are certain benefits which they are going to get. And on top of that, you also need to observe that what framework will be suitable for your project. Just if I know Scrum, I will be using them. That is not a right practice. Okay. So in this way, we can basically tackle this question. Like when a Scrum process is not working for a project, then what we have to do? We have to retrospect and see whether Scrum is still the best or not. And if you believe that the Scrum is best, then make sure, make sure that you're educating and coaching your team members so that they are utilizing the scrum to the maximum extent even then also it is not being fulfilled then look for other alternatives or other frameworks which are being present under the agile how do you break old habits within an organization one answer i can say is coaching and then inculcate the mindset okay so already if there is an existing policy which is being present right Make sure that you are giving them an appropriate coaching. Make them understand how the dynamic market is working. Make them understand how agile is going to be helpful for us. What are the loopholes with the existing process? Make sure that you are giving them all the benefits, all the advantages which we are going to get with our process. Maybe, maybe they may not change the mind immediately because not everyone is of same personality. So some may take some time to change their mind. Okay, some may go ahead and try to take one day, within one day they will change their mind. So it's all about give them some time, make them understand, okay, make them understand the entire process and then obviously they will be able to go ahead and try to change their mind. That's how you can be able to do. But we can't go into anyone's mind and change that, right? Give them some time, make them understand the process and everything appropriately so that they can go ahead and try to do the things in a much better way. Okay, next one, how, how would you prepare people to accept this Scrum process? Again, one simple thing, how would you make the people, now how am I making you understand this Scrum process? By making you, by training, by understanding you, by making you understand, by coaching, by mentoring, then only you will be understand it. Okay, so if you want to prepare the people to move into the Scrum, make them understand what is an agile manifesto, values, principles, and then try to make them understand this Scrum process. And that can be done only through coaching and mentoring only. So someone on your team has not taken a liking to Scrum, which is negatively affecting the project. What would you do? First, understand the problem. First, understand the problem. Listen to the problem. Like, what is that the problem which that person on your team is trying to narrate to you? And first, see that what are those challenges and see that how Agile and Scrum can tackle it with all your knowledge towards the process. And then try to make them convince. Right. Now try to make them convinced. Initially, they may not accept it, but you can always say them that even if they go with the old method, you can always say them this method would have been improved by using so and so process. Then we would have not felt this issue or then we would have not felt this problem. In that way, when we quote some examples and provide them some solutions, then everyone will start liking it. Maybe initially they may not accept it, but gradually everyone will accept it. Okay, the world got digitalized, not suddenly, right? Slowly, everyone started adapting to the digital world. And right now, everything is being done online. The transactions are being online. Everything is digitalized because it took some time. People understood it and then they started interacting with it. And then they turned into a total digital world. So in the same way here also, give some time, make them understand, and then we will proceed from there. Okay, describe a time when a project fell behind the schedule. If you are not delivering appropriately, let me say whatever the delivery, if you are trying to commit for a sprint, when you are trying to deliver it within the sprint, if you are not committing your, your deliverables in a sprint appropriately, right, then definitely you will fall behind the schedule. Okay, Disc like describe a time when the project fell behind the schedule, when we are not, when we have not committed appropriately in a sprint, then automatically we will not be able to deliver it. When we are not delivering it, it will be a spillover to the next sprint. So at that point of time, whatever we committed, we are not in a position to deliver it. 
So we should never make those type of scenarios or situations to come because either we didn't add a clarity, that is the reason why we just have committed, but we were not in a position to deliver when we worked on it because the clarity or the scope was not clear. Or otherwise, the team members were not having full capacity, but still they went ahead and committed due to which we, we were not able to complete everything. So these are the learning lessons which we, which we should discuss in retrospective and see that how we can tackle in the upcoming sprint. Okay, so have you managed a project that didn't meet its initial objectives? Yes, yes. Basically, one big project is Scrum itself. We have, we have started implementing the Scrum, but initially there were so many challenges that people didn't even know what is Scrum and Agile. By continuously coaching and mentoring them and giving them some time to accept it, then only the things have fallen in line. Otherwise, the things have never been fall. I was very much patient. I know that one day my team will go ahead and try to encourage the process. So I was waiting for that. Once it became successful, then everything was being done very smoothly and we totally moved into Agile and Scrum. Okay. So what's one change you have had to make in the middle of a project? We should actually never change anything in the middle of a project. But if there is any high priority which the customer needs to go like uh, reported and we have to work on it, then definitely we should accommodate it. If there are any high priorities which we should work on, right, then definitely we should accommodate those high priority action items, which is very important for the customer in the middle of a project. What would you do if a team member is unable to complete a task for a sprint? First, understand what has happened. Any requirement change has happened or whether the team, whether the team member was not available. Is it a sick leave or is it a COVID or is it something like where he was being involved with some other work? So first understand it and then we will see that in the retrospective, like how we can tackle those situations so that the team member will not be occupied with any other work so that that task can be completed without any external disturbances. Okay, so what would you do if you disagree with a team member on how best to approach a task? Are you capable of managing a team? Obviously, right? So as a self-organized team, why will I manage my team? The team is self-organized. So they should be able to know what they have to work on as a scrum team. Why will I able to manage them then? The question itself is not appropriate here, right? So we should make sure that we are going ahead and we are helping them. Okay, we are not managing them. So they know what they have to work on because they are responsible for deliverables. Okay, so how would you deal with a difficult stakeholder? It is all about like how you are going to deal a difficult stakeholder. It is, you should have a strong understanding on a process. You should have a strong understanding on agile and scrum process that itself will make you go ahead and try to talk with any tough guy. Okay, that is an important thing. How frequently do you think you should communicate with stakeholders? It all depends on your project and your organization. But if you ask me this question, at least one week. Weekly, one meeting will be sufficient with the stakeholders. Okay, what is your favorite Scrum event? Obviously, retrospective. Okay, so obviously it is said to be retrospective because in the retrospective, we are giving scope for our team members to go ahead and try to talk to each other. Okay, so that we are able to listen to what concerns they have. So they feel more empowered and valuable. So retrospective is said to be the favorite scrum event. So why do you enjoy working in this industry? Because it's obvious industry, I would say, why do you like agile and scrum? Because of the way how it has been designed with responding to change as per the market requirement and, and making interactions, discussing with the customers, making them feel happy. So all these things which are being present, right, is actually making me feel happy to move towards Scrum and Agile. So that is the reason why I would just say that I like to work in this respective area because these are certain things which make me feel passionate and fascinated. Okay, so these were the list of questions which were being asked. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you missed upon any concept or if you want to dive deeper into the concepts discussed, then we have something really, really, really special for you 
we have our free class on how you can upgrade from a beginner to professional scrum master and earn way way more so if you want to register for this free class all you want to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash scrum 02 and after that you'll be seeing this kind of interface you just have to click on register now and just to mention in this class you'll be learning about the whole introduction and a holistic overview of Agile and Scrum, why you should be learning. You'll be getting some Scrum artifacts. You'll be getting to know about some Scrum events. You'll be getting to know about some amazing job opportunities as well. So if you want to register, just click on register now and you can select your event date according to your availability. Add your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. And after that, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. And on the extreme right, you'll be seeing this link. So you just save that link, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.